So I'm going to enter a check and I'm going to type in that we got this on, well, 1005. Okay. Let's say this is on the 14th. And then we're, I think it should be 1004 for some reason. I'm going to keep it at that. And then I'm going to say this is for Epiphone, Epiphone tab. And there's, oh, and it says there's open purchase orders exist for this vendor. Do you want to receive against one or more? I'm going to say yes. There's the two purchase orders. I'm going to select both of them and say, okay. So now we're getting that. And then it populates down here. Notice it jumped from expenses because I'm not just going to go to an inventory account because we're buying inventory. Because if I did that, it wouldn't be able to track the sub ledger by item, the unit item on a perpetual inventory system. So that's why we have to use the items which are populated. We set up the items in a prior presentation here, and then we used those items to, to populate the purchase order. The purchase order then just pulled them over into the actual bill. If I scroll through this, we can see that this ties out to the same data we entered into the two purchase orders. These two down here are billable. These are billable because when we populated them in the purchase order, we said they were for a specific customer. We imagined in this case, Eric Music, our customer came in, said, we want this stuff. We said, we don't have that right now. We will order it from our vendor, Epiphone in this case. And the vendor didn't need to know about Eric Music, but it's useful for us to see that now I have this stuff, I can turn around and bill or invoice Eric Music, our customer, now that we have the inventory on hand, that'll be the next step. These ones up top are not billable because we we are just buying those guitars for the shop, hoping people will come in and purchase those. That would be the general idea.